Okay, so here's a grill that I built out of a portable air tank. I'm not sure if it's a 7 gallon or a 5 gallon, but it's a 10 inch cylinder, about 21 inches long. And uh, it's probably about 90 thousandths uh, 90, thick. So there's the inside. Here's the grill. Okay, so here's the tank I'm using. The way that I'm going to mark it is it has a seam right here. And I already figured out I want it to be the lid to be like a quarter, like a quarter section of it. This is a 10 inch diameter pipe or tank or whatever. It's basically a pipe. I got this flexible ruler and I'm going to use this for my for my reference point. And um, the circumference is 31.42. So a quarter of that would be like 7.85 or 7 and 7 eighths, which is almost exactly the same. Anyway, let me get this marked up and I'll come back. At this point I have it all marked out and it's full of water. I can't really see. Yeah, there goes my mark down there. So I'm going to take my pneumatic cutoff tool. And the reason I'm going to do that is to, because I'm probably going to be standing in water here in a minute, so I'm going to use an air tool to cut this. I know it's just an air tank, but somebody had painted it twice. I don't know if it has paint fumes in it. I don't know. I'm not trying to find out. So I went ahead and filled it with water. Okay, so at this point now I have my door cut out. So now I have to figure out how to get this door mounted about an eighth inch of a gap all the way around. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do the hinges. I'm going to use this piece of straight bar uh, to line them up, and I'm going to roll them to the top like that. Uh, I got to I got to give a little bit of space for the little band that goes over. I haven't figured out how much just yet, but that's how I'm going to do it. This is a piece of three eighths round bar I got from Home Depot, and what I did was I took my chop saw and I cut out two little pieces that are an inch and a half wide two inches tall and I drilled a three-eighths hole in there to fit this to fit this piece of round bar okay I'm, I lost some of my video so uh, this is how I did my hinges all I did was cut them out of a piece of one-eighth thick piece of flat steel and I just welded them on there welds look alright so that's how the hinges look, pretty simple. So let's now move on to putting the banding around the doors. All right, so now I'm gonna cut out the strips that go around the door. And I'm gonna do that with the Diablo Steel Demon Blade and a regular skill saw. So I already know my uh, base width is one and nine sixteenth. So I'm gonna set this back two and five eighths and I'm gonna get a, a I'm going to get a strip that's pretty much like a one and one and one sixteenth of an inch. So what I'm going to do is take this and bend it around like that. Bend it around like that and weld it on. Alright, at this point I have my door all cleaned up for the most part. At least right here I'm going to weld it at the moment. I got my strip clamped in place. And now it's time to put some tack welds on here. Just gonna do some fusion tacks. Look at that precision skill. I'm probably the best welder in the world. Just kidding, I'm actually kind of new at it, but whatever. And here goes that piece tacked on. Okay, so I went ahead and welded the whole thing. I just did a fusion weld. Yeah, I kind of mess up in some spots, but I mean, it's a weld seam all the way down. One problem I encountered is now the door is warped. Um, it's on this corner right here. It's setting up at least an eighth of an inch. Okay, so let's let's get rid of this for a while. So what I got to do now is build the base for it. The way that I'm going to attach the stand to this pipe, I'm going to weld a piece of angle like this because I figured out that's the most simple way to get a really strong like base on it. This is two two by two eighth inch angle iron. I'm pretty sure it can hold that up. 
Okay, so the tank is going to sit right here in this little V groove. And then this piece of angle iron is going to sit on top of this one. And I just cut off these little angles so that way that this piece will sit right there. And uh, you can pretty much balance it. And it, if you put a square on it, it, it sits pretty much where it needs to be. All I got to do is weld it up and then weld that to the tank. And I'll be done. Oh my god, I'm getting tired. Okay, so I've been working at this for a while. Uh, the top, that's how that's gonna that's gonna mount to the tank. It's gonna sit there like that. I have my bottom frame welded up. I've been using a stick welder. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a bead right here, and then I'll show you some of the welds that I made. They're they're kind of crappy, but. I'll show you some of my loads I made. Not really proud of them, but let's just go ahead and look at it. That's kind of like, I don't even know what to call that, like kind of like a corner joint. Yeah, that's a corner joint. Big ugly bead, inconsistent, has some kind of mess up in the middle. But that's fine, I'm not worried about it. Here goes one. Started out really good. Uh, not too bad. Not really that great either. Then here goes my other my other corner joint on the inside. I think they all kind of look crappy, really. So there goes my that weld I just did. Okay, so I went ahead and welded the whole thing out. I just did a fusion weld. It doesn't look as good as I wanted to. Uh, also, it, it kind of warped the door a little bit. And that might not be so much the door that's warped. The tank actually had a bulge right here. So now it's trying to sit on a flat edge. Uh, yeah. As I showed how earlier, my, my uh, stand has like a little V for a piece of angle iron to fit into. So what I'm going to do now is weld this onto the bottom. And the way to find the way that I'm gonna do this is I already know the circumference of this thing is 31.4 inches and that makes it a quarter. This line was done, this is a quarter. The, the door was cut out like one one fourth of it, right? So the center line of the tank where I want it to be at the bottom of the grill is gonna be like you know yeah, so it's going to be seven and seven eighths. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the marker. I'm going to clean it first, but what I'm going to do is just take a marker and mark it at, uh, at one point right here. Take it down right here. Mark it at seven and seven eighths. And draw a straight line across. And that's going to be my center line. I'll be back after I mount it on the stand. So here it is, a pretty bad fill. This material, this uh, eighth inch thick 2x2 two two angle iron, I thought it was a lot stiffer than it is. But check this out. It just flexes way too much. That's crazy. And I turned the lid into a banana and it doesn't sit down straight. I went ahead and welded this handle on it. And I made the grate for it or the grill or whatever. Um, what I used was a piece of expanded steel. I believe it's a 16th thick. Something like that. And then this, uh, some square tube that's one inch square tube. That's supposed to be 16 gauge but it's actually thinner. It measures about 48 thousandths or whatever. It's still like, you know, it's, pl it's plenty strong though. See, it's not really that, that thin. And um, for now, all I'm going to do is set this, this other piece of grate in the, in the bottom. So that way it could get air underneath the wood or charcoal. 
and I'm not real sure how this works, but I'm just going to set it in there like that. The way it is right now, once it sets in, it's like it doesn't go anywhere. So I didn't have, so I, so I'm not really going to mount any little tabs in there to hold them in place, at least not yet. Okay, so here's the finished, almost finished product. I went ahead and done the stack out of two by two uh, square tubing that I had. Just use my TIG welder to weld that on. Came out all right, I think. And inside, I have the grill I made and a tray to keep to get air underneath the fire. There's still a few little things I need to do, like cut off these little edges, do something with this. I might put the thermometer in here if it doesn't hit it, but uh, I want to see how it bursts the new stack and see what kind of temperatures it gets up to. And uh, yeah, I kind of need to figure out how to bend this door straight. That was kind of a problem. I warped the door, but whatever, you know, nothing's perfect. Okay, so I already like uh, went over the whole grill with a stripper disc and got off most of the paint. Almost all of it except for some little crevices. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, burn it out a few times and make sure there's no oil in some of that tubing or, you know, just get rid of anything that could be a problem. And right here I'm testing it out. I'm, I'm, I don't even know if you're supposed to do this with this type of thermometer. I'm probably going to ruin it. But uh, I went ahead and, you know, I'm holding it in there and I'm going to wait until it peaks out and see what it reads. And it read, it read 536 degrees. That pit gets really hot for just a little bit of wood that I have in it. I'll show that here in a second. I still need to put some kind of air inlet on the side of it that's adjustable. That way it can burn better. Um, but I just wanted to test it out a little bit and, and try to burn it out. The rest of that's going to have to be on a part two. And, and you just seen how wobbly it is. I also got to fix that part two. Uh, anyway, so if you found this video uh, interesting or helpful, please like and subscribe. The end. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show the little bit of wood I have in it. This is just a, a few pieces of the branches that fell off an oak tree. And uh, it kind of... It's kind of too close to the grill, but whatever. I'm going to go ahead and test it out in the future. Uh, stay tuned for part two.